So um, I was looking at breaking the trap of fear, okay? And that's uh, the song we started off with um, is about those uh, chains are broken. Um, so God wants us to be set free, okay? And, um, you know, the enemy, um, God has his language and then the enemy has his language, Okay. And the enemy likes to copy everything that God does. So, um, so when God speaks about something, the en enemy only copies. He's not an he. He's nothing originates from him. Okay, he he just likes everything that God does. He copies. So I wanted to talk to you today about fear. Okay, so God wants us to be set free from fear. And there are different types of fear we have. But the one I'm going to look at today is the fear of man, okay? So the fear of man is a very common bondage among us believers. We often don't see it as a spiritual bondage. Instead, we usually blame it on our personalities. The fear of man usually manifests in behaviors such as people pleasing and control issues, okay? And so I'm going to look at the first fear of man, the fear of man that traps you to man, okay? That snares you to man. And for that, I would like us to look at John 12, okay? John 12, um, let me see, John 12, 42 to 43. Rubini, would you like to read that, please? John 12, 42 to 43. Can't hear you, Ru. Thank you. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Okay. So sometimes we are, um, we fear when we measure ourselves by what other people think of us, we cannot truly be who we are. Instead, our identities are defined by misinformation. So that first one is about the fear of man. So we believe in Jesus, but quite often we don't speak about it. Um, because we worry that we might be put out of our communities, okay? Um, and that is a fear that I have been worried about because for me, I held, you know, I hold my children very close to me and I worry about what will they say, what will they think, okay? So that was the first fear I was going to look at. The second one is the fear of man um, that snares us from God. Okay, and that I would like to look at Luke 22, 54 to 62. Luke 22, 54 to 62. So Luke 22. Fifty-four to sixty-two. And this that? is a common one. Sorry, yes, we just sorry, yeah. 54 to 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. 
And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. Man, I'm not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he, wept. he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded. Okay. Is that it's it? Up to verse 62. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so Peter had walked closely with Jesus, but the fear of man caused Peter to de deny Jesus. The good news is when the fear of man pulls away from God. The good news is when the fear of man pulls us away from God, he still calls us back. He doesn't condemn us but continues to hold on to us. And Santi, this uh, earlier on when he prayed, he, his thank you prayer was, thank you for your mercy and your grace. So it's his mercy, which the Bible says is fresh every morning that pulls us back. And the last one I want to look at is the fear of man snares others through you. And that is from John, Nine, verse thirteen to twenty-two. Rami, would you like to go for that? Okay. Uh, from nine. Nine. 13 to 22. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> they brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now it, was a, now it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he, does not, because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and, re and received his sight. So they called the parents of him who had, who had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he, he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age, ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. So when we are snared by the fear of man, we wound and trap others. We do this through control and rejection. Deliverance comes through first seeing that we are ensnared. 
that we are trapped, then asking for help, and perhaps that could be from trusted friends, so that we can yield this fear to the Lord. Because sometimes when we are, we are worried or scared of something, we may not speak of what God has done in our lives because we worry about what, what that would mean. You know, how would other people receive it? Will they believe it? Um, because sometimes, you know, we worry about rejection from family members. So having looked at these three passages, the question I have is, of the two behaviors or of the three behaviors that show bondage of fear of man, which do you most identify with? Pleasing people or controlling behavior? And then how do pleasing people and controlling behavior break down our relationship with God? So that's my first question. Which one do you think you might fall into? Which category? Um, is it pe people pleasing or controlling your behavior? You know, um, you worry about what people think, and then you, you know, you're controlled by somebody else's behavior. You know, the way they think to make sure that you conform. Like the parents of this boy, they wouldn't talk about Jesus healing them of the, their child of blindness. Instead, they passed it on to the child to say, well, he's of age, he can talk for himself. Um, they, would, they were not willing to boldly stand up and say, actually, um, it, it is, you know, God has done this and this is what I believe in. So how often do we, um, are we worried about speaking out? You know, is that because we want we don't want to displease somebody? Or is it we feel rejection? So um, what are your thoughts? And I'll pause it now. Yeah, I'll pause it for now. How you put the two together. Yeah. yeah. So as we thank you for the discussion. It was I always think the discussion is more important than what you know what I say or what other pastors say because it's in the discussion that we grow isn't it so as we conclude we need to remember the following God wants us to be free from the fear of man God always calls us back when we are pulled away from him by the fear of man and we find freedom from the fear of man when we surrender it to the Lord and ask others for help Unlike the fear of man, godly fear, what is godly fear? It's a reverence for God, isn't it? It's that absolute awe of God. And in Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, I love this verse, is a good description of this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. This reverence and awe is exactly what the fear of God means to us as believers. This is the motivating factor for us to surrender to the creator of this world, this universe. Believers do not have to fear man. We only have to walk in reverence to God. And our reverence to God gives us, um, you know, he gives us power. He doesn't give us a fear of, um, you know, doesn't make us timid, but gives us a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. So fearing God should be what should be at the forefront of our minds walking in reverence to him and surrendering to him. Um, we have no reason to be scared of our God. We have his promise that nothing, nothing can separate us from his love in Romans 8, 38 to 39. We have his promise 
that he will never leave us or forsake us in Hebrews 13, 5. Fearing God means having such a reverence for him that it has a great impact on the way we live our lives. So thank you for joining. And um, I hope some part of this talk today um, will help you in your journey with the Lord. We all have to grow. We cannot be stagnant. Thank you very much for joining.